Welcome back to Hackwood. In this video, we'll explore four different approaches to solve the problem, set matters to zero. We'll begin with brute force approach, then optimize it step by step, improving both the time and space complexity. By the end, you'll see how to solve this problem using warp on space efficiently. Let's dive in and watch this together. So what is the question? Set matters to zero. So basically given an M into an integer matrix, this is a named matrix, if an element is zero, set its entire row and column to zero. You got this uh, problem, right? So basically if the element is zero, we have to make this row and this column as zero. Simple. So we just need to have a, keep track of where all zeros exist. And then uh, we have to uh, for, uh, reform the matrix accordingly, right? This is a matrix given. Uh, this is how we represent the two dimensional matrix. So this is, uh, as you can see here, this is a row, 111 and 101 is under row. So 111 is under row. So all this step together, this form like column and row, just the two D matrix. And then the output is like this one. So you got to know, right, how to do this out, uh, reforming. So basically here, like if it is zero, we keep it all these things as zero. That's all. Coming to second example, we have zero here. So we have to make this and this as zero and here also same this and this. We already made this, so we don't need to do that again. And this has to be zero. So yeah, that's the crux of the problem, what to do and all. So constants here. So M is equals to matrix length, N is equals to uh, matrix of zero length. So basically these represent the row and column. We'll see uh, like uh, how, like if you don't get the idea, we'll see it later. And then here M1, N or an enclosure range of one to 200. And matrix, like each element in the matrix, uh, IG is a typical representation of these elements in the matrix and they are in the like uh, integer uh, range only. So minus 2, 431 to 2, 431 minus 1. So here, um, this is a follow-up, like a straight forward solution using M, M cross N space uh, is probably a bad idea, but this can be a possible solution. That's why they given this. And then uh, simple improvement is a simple O of M plus N space, but still not the best solution. Could you devise a constant space solution? Yes, we'll do that. And see, if you get us, um, like if you don't get how to uh, solve this problem, we, we'll always go through the hints. Like in interview also, interviewer always gives you hints. It's not that uh, you're referring to only your thought process, like interview will help you in, in it, yeah, like coming to the solution. Also like uh, if you're stuck, which problem is this, like which character it belongs to, you can always see the topics. So here it is array, definitely it's array because like we use a two-dimensional array and hash table and matrix, something to do with hash table and matrix. Matrix is all, like we already have matrix here. And companies, like what all companies is, like I don't have premium, so I don't have this. So hint one, so if any of the matrix has a zero, we can record its row and column number using additional memory. But if you don't want to use extra memory, then you can manipulate the array instead, simulating exactly what the question says. Basically this hint like would give you some idea, but keep this in mind, uh, we'll drive to the solutions. And then second hint they given is setting cells to zero on the fly while iterating might lead to discrepancies. What if you use some other integer value as your marker? There is still a better approach for this problem with O of one space. So basically all these hints they are given and you can explore the hints like this one you would have is two sets to keep track of rows and columns which need to be set to zero. And but for O of one space, you can use only one of the rows and column to keep track of this information. So basically this, they're saying like we have hash table, right? That's uh, essentially like we can use set. Okay, and then we can use two sets to keep track of what all zeros exist in given row or column. And next is, uh, we have a hint for the, we can use first cell of every row and column as a flag. So this flag would determine whether a row or column has been set to zero. So these are the four hints given. So probably now you might know how to solve this problem as well, so seeing these hints. Even if you don't get the hints, don't worry, we'll drive you step by step. So first approach using brute force. So basically we have uh, this given matrix. We just need to make a copy of it. Why copy of it? Because if we change it on the fly, you, uh, firstly, like it's okay to change it 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 here. But if you change this zeros, you might end up like taking, considering this as zero and make this like whole matrix zero. We don't want to be in that inconsistent state or discrepancies. That's why we have to uh, do a copy of this matrix. And that would be having O of M cross and space complexity. That's what they mentioned in the first hint, if you had seen that, right? So I, that, gens, uh, that hints are just like for giving you idea. It's not like you had to go through hints every time. Okay, so uh, firstly, uh, we got to know that we had to define some extra space uh, because like we don't want discrepancies. How to define that extra space? In that extra space also be careful. You should not be doing shallow copy. Shallow copy is like, just like pointing to the same space where the array one point to. So that's why uh, if we change this array one, uh, we're reflecting uh, the same change in array two as well. So they both point to the same memory location. We don't want to do that. We have to do deep copy. Deep copy 
uh, is like we we take every like we don't uh, refer to that uh, memory space, but instead like we'll rather create uh, like we create a clone of it. It's like uh, we are not changing in the same memory space. This is the important interview question, the conceptual base. Keep track of it. Okay. So the approach. So how do we solve this? Firstly. The basic thing we require is row and columns, order row and columns, so that we have to create a, another copy matrix as well, right? Like that's a basic thing we have to be thinking of. Firstly, we need the dimensions. And then after getting the dimensions, uh, what we need to think is we need to iterate to the dimensions and then make a deep copy of the original matrix. You know why deep copy is required by this time. And then this ensures, because this ensures original matrix remains unchanged during the uh, marking phase. We have to mark zeros like where it exists and all, right? So. We don't want to do that uh, to the original matrix because original matrix would be uh, having some discrepancies like uh, as we just discussed. So and then we loop through the original matrix to locate the cell that contains zero. So once zero is found, we mark the entire row uh, in copy matrix with zeros. Okay. Similarly, we mark the entire column in copy matrix with zeros. So basically we replace that row and column with zeros if we found zero in this original matrix. For that, like let this instance, if we found this zero, we'll make it uh, this row and this column as zero. That's the intention. That's what we're doing. We're just translating the problem statement into a solution. See, this, there is always solution given problem. Okay. You just need to think to that lines. And then what we do, uh, we just finally copy the modified values from the copy matrix back to the original matrix simple. So now we got like, we replaced whatever we required. Now uh, we just need to copy this to the original matrix. That's all. We, uh, we cannot return this uh, copied matrix because they are referring to the same space. Uh, like we have to modify in place. It's like pass by reference we have to do. Okay. So that's why we need to modify the given matrix only. We can't send the copy matrix here. Uh, they are referring it as an in place operation. Okay. So that, uh, that's why we had to do this. Else like we could have sent this copy matrix back. So yeah, the code now, how do we score code this here? So first thing, basically we check if matrix is uh, empty, right? So this like this, this is like empty matrix in case of, uh... so let's look at the code here. So firstly, what we do, we do input validation because like if the matrix is empty, we don't need to do anything next. We return like none. So we can return none. So we just written here. So we don't need to do further processing. That's why. And next is we have to get the dimensions as we discussed in step one. Because like we need it further to iterate over the matrix. Uh, so here uh, we use rows uh, like we just use a tuple unpacking method in Python. So this uh, length of the matrix goes to rows and length of matrix of zero goes to columns. So, so why length of matrix is considered rows? So if you observe this carefully, if the given matrix is like one, one, and let's say this is a given matrix and two, two. So if you represent in matrix format it's going to be 1 1 and 2 2 so what you are doing here uh, length of matrix is rows so length of matrix is rows because like here uh, we have this like how many rows here two rows each row we have a one of the uh, list right so that's why length of matrix is rows and a length of matrix of zero so this row uh, length like this list length is going to be a column so how many columns here we have two columns those are basically these two things so we, we have this columns as length of matrix of zero. Hope you got the idea. Next thing is to create a deep copy of the original matrix to, to or modify it during the iteration. So how do we create the deep copy? This is created using the list comprehension format. So basically this means to say that select everything of the row for row in matrix. So whatever we have in this one, we just copy everything. So we're just making a copy of it for row in matrix for each row in matrix. We just making a copy of it. Okay. So here we have to iterate till rows and column. This is like the standard format to traverse to two dimensional array. And then we check if the row and column is zero. So if that is zero, we have to mark the entire row with zeros in the copied matrix, right? So for modifying that particular row, uh, we have to iterate to, uh, to the column side. So basically, uh, let's say the example of this case. So for this row, uh, we have to modify it as uh, zero. So how do we make it? So we have to iterate till like this length, right? So for that length, what we consider this is a column length. So that's why we, we take for K and range columns. Okay. So, and then uh, we changing the row of K. So basically K is that iteration step. So if we, let's say we are in this position here, uh, the, this is going to be zero, zero. 
and then this is going to be uh, 0 row on the first column. So basically for a given row, we trade to the columns, not to the row length. So yeah, hope you got the idea. Same applies to the this one column as well. For a given column, we trade to the uh, rows. So hope you got the idea here for uh, both. Okay, and then for k in range rows, we just uh, make this k and column. So for particular column, so basically the idea is we have to freeze that column and iterate to the rows. So for example here, uh, we have to change one, like 1, 2 to 0. So how do we change this? Like we have to iterate to row 1 and this is row 2. So we, you have to change the row and keep the column fixed. That's the idea. So here also same. We keep the row fixed and iterate to the column. And then we just copy the updated values in the copied matrix back to the original matrix. So here for uh, just iterating to this and then we, we marking the matrix of row column to whatever we have in copy matrix. So here, uh, what is the time complexity? So till this point, you're clear that it is going to be a O of M into N. So if M equal to N, this is going to be a O of N square. But it's not like it might be the case where M is equal to N. Uh, and then we, we are iterating to this one, right? So here, uh, this takes M. Sorry, this takes, this is the columns, right? So this is N. This takes N and this is the rows. So which is of length M, they're given. So time complexity is O of M into N into M plus N. M is number of uh, rows, N is number of columns. So here uh, we are returning to rows and columns, right? That's why we have M plus N. So this all in nested, so that's why. So if M is equals to N, what would it become? So it becomes O of N cube, basically, right? We have to ignore the constant factor. So like, let's say this M is equal to N, then it become N square into 2N, it would become. And then, so we take this constant factor, so it would be O of N cube. So I got the code ready. Let's try submitting this. So before submitting, make sure to run it always because like you'll get to know if any errors. So yeah, this is accepted for two cases. Let's try submitting this. Cool, this accept solution and almost with 55% of users. So even if you solve with this brute force approach, uh, the problem would be solved and then you would be like in interview, like you'd be considered for the next rounds. It's just like uh, you had to solve this problem. It's not like they always expect the optimized solution, but if they ask for optimized solution, let's open the optimized solution now. So we can optimize the solution further using set. So now you'd be getting the idea, right? Like uh, instead of having entire uh, matrix clone, what if we keep track of what column and what row to be changed to zero? That's all. That's the idea about. So firstly, we have to check for the empty matrix. This is the basic we had, right? So if the matrix is empty, we just return immediately to avoid errors. Next, we use two sets, zero rows, zero columns to store the indices of the rows and columns that needs to be set to zero. Very simple, right? If you have this, then what else like stopping us? That's all like we have our solution almost done. We just need to loop through this matrix and identify the cells that contain zero and mark the corresponding solution column. And for that, we just loop through the matrix again to set the cells to zero if the row or column is marked. That's all right, simple, like what's stopping us here? We have all this zero, what rows to be set to zero and what columns to be set to zero. We just iterate, it's a simple. This is a base case which I discussed, like we found matrix we written. So here we don't need to do anything. So that's why we written an empty matrix or null. Uh, we can do either way. Like uh, this won't be the case maximum for this uh, question, but it's just like ed edge case handling. So here we know what we are doing. We just uh, using this zero rows and zero cons to like insights to set. Yeah, this is a tuple unpacking approach and you know why we have this you just have these measurements uh, for rows and columns and then we just traverse to the matrix to identify cells with zero and mark the corresponding rows and columns so this is a standard way of iterating to the two-dimensional array for uh, like for row and rows and then for column and calls so if any cell is zero we just uh, for that particular cell we add the row and column to the zero rows and columns respectively right step four is just like update the matrix by setting uh, cells to zero based on their marked rows and columns this is also a pretty standard format of iterating the two-dimensional array and then we just check if the row is in like what we need to do here we need to consider only for the rows which are in the zero rows and then which or like for the column which is in the zero columns so for both of the things we have to modify right it's not unconditioned by the way it is or condition make sure like here uh, we have the question like if any uh, say this is zero we have to mark whole row as zero and we have to mark whole column as zero that's why we have this or condition so it's like if they had asked like only particular row we can change that row that's it's like our condition here it's our it's not and like i repeat that's why we use our condition and then we set this to zero so all set we have this problem solved i got the code ready let's try running this it's accepted so let's assign it in this Cool, this also accepts solution beats 30%. So like one thing to keep track is here, 
uh, here uh, the we reduced the time complex to of mn but still this is taking this time b like don't consider this always like uh, if your solution is accepted and if you, you have track of the uh, time and space complex it's okay it, it, this depends on like some server uh, handling the request like lead code server it, it not always like if your code is optimized it will give the same thing even if you submit this again this would give different uh, percentage of beating see now it says 48 so don't rely on this okay if your code is pretty much optimized it's okay to not consider this okay so what is the time complexity now here time complexity is uh, we are trading to the uh, m and n so that's basically o of m into n and the space complexity here is o of m plus n o of m is what the rows uh, number of rows and number of columns we are using the two additional sets in worst case we need to have all rows and all uh, columns to be zero that's why we have to consider that worst case always in calculating the space complexity that's why it's o of m plus n so the space complex is o of m plus n and then uh, the time complexity is nowhere exceeding the o of m into n m into n because for m rows and n columns we are returning that's why it's m into n and here m plus n because we use two sets so hold on guys now that we solved using the set do you think that it can be solved using list yes you have guessed is correct we can solve this in list as well so what changes so in set uh, in list like we can't do uh, in check right basically if we do the in check that would be again o of n cube because here come on guys that is going to be referencing whole list so that's why we have to do uh, optimize like we have to think of optimal way here uh, always like set uh, lookup is o of 1 you know right so that's why we choose set but we can use list with same time complexity and space complexity by thinking differently what we need to think we have to fill the list uh, let's go over the approach like that I'll, I'll be having it here okay so here uh, we see right the same step reminds check matrix is empty so return empty or return immediately and then our instance two arrays same same case same scene traverse to the entire matrix if uh, identify where zeros are located and then we mark the corresponding rows and columns so loop to the matrix again and update the cells based on the marking of the step three basically the entire step is same but we are using list and using the same time complex and space complex how do we solve this so think of it like we, if you have the lookup lookup in list is always o of one based on that uh, in index lookup i meant not in operator in operator in sets is o of one so index lookup in list is o of one so the using the same property we can solve this using list as well if we use uh, list here before so that would be uh, it would be like why the reason why we don't want to use in operator is like in operator in list will iterate through everything but for set it would have done some pre-processing that's why it's o of one always remember don't uh, like avoid doing the in operator in list okay uh, so here how do we solve now we know that we're not doing in operator we know that uh, it would be costly how are we solving now that's the question so we just keep uh, like this is same so here uh, you know this till this step is very much same and then here this is the crux of the uh, solution okay here we are working boolean guys so here if like if zero row how many rows are hard to be zero we just uh, in slice so we go with the optimistic approach here thinking that like we don't need to change any row that's why we keep false if it is false we don't change like boolean to keep track of if to change or not if it is true we have to change the original matrix so always go with optimistic approach in life or in problem solving as well so we just uh, we know right like uh, we, we know the, uh, how to solve this now we, if it is true we have to change so now we have to mark through wherever the cells is zero that's all we have this almost solution covered so here we just go iterate the rows and columns and then we have this uh, check for uh, like if it's a uh, zero row or column then we mark this particular row and column in this one so we're taking this index here particular index we are accessing and then setting it to two this is the uh, crux of this uh, step okay and then uh, after this like we iterate the matrix again to set the appropriate cell to zero so there we had inset we had an in operator now we just uh, the same o of one step can be achieved using zero row of uh, index lookup here so index lookup is o of one in list okay so we just this happens with o of one so same now if zero row or zero column has to be set to zero we just uh, take that particular uh, row and column and then keep it to zero that's all guys nothing much is almost solved using the c you, you learned how to solve using three approaches now with uh, here the same uh, space complex and time complex remains so here the space complex is o of m plus n because we use two lists right time complexity you know pretty much is a standard when you use two for loops it's almost every time it's gonna be o of m into n if different uh, length if it is same length o of n square guys so you know right so i have got the code ready here let's try running this 
it's passed. So it's accepted solution for two cases. Let's try submitting this. We don't have any errors. First, we have to check always run, right? Okay. So yeah, it beats 66%. So it's accepted solution. Cool. Congratulations. Now we know how to solve this in three approaches. You're almost there. Like interviewer would be pretty much impressed if you say three approaches. Okay. Next, like if he wants further optimization, he's some greedy guy. Okay. In that case, we have to go for this further optimization. It's not always the case. You have to go for over fun optimization here. So what is over fun optimization? So here, what is the intuition basically? So intuition is like, guys, like see, to achieve the O on space, like use the first row and first column of the matrix as a markers to track which row and column should be zeroed. And after marking, we just iterate again to update the matrix, uh, then handle the first row and column separately if they originally contain zero. That's the crux of this. So basically, instead of keeping track of another matrix or another uh, set or a list to mark uh, where the zero exists, we just use the first row and first column of the matrix. This is the first row, first column of the matrix to indicate if they have to be marked as zero. That's all. So basically, uh, like if this has zero, we keep this one and this one as zero. That's all. And then we just update this as zero, 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 zero. So guys here, like uh, always see that uh, for the first row and column, we have this is a common. We don't know whether we have to change the uh, column to zero or row to zero. So in that case, uh, it might be the case where, uh, see, if it is a zero, uh, let me take a, a solid example if it didn't clarify you. So let's say we have this array of uh, 1, 1, uh, 1, 0, and uh, we have this 1, 1. In this case, uh, if you mark this as 0 of in, in, with our latest approach, this 0 does uh, means that we have to mark this as 0 and this also as 0. So in that case, like since this first row and first column going to be our reference, in this case, we don't want to get confused that we, if you had to change whole column, if the row is 0, for that cases, we have to handle this case separately because this is common for both row and column. We don't know column to be uh, 0 or row to be 0. That's why uh, we keep track of this one using the two booleans here. First row as 0, first column as 0. So now I told the overview. So let's go for the full explanation here. We use the first row and column to mark which rows and columns set, should be set to 0. So here the first row as 0 and the first column as 0 flags keeps track of whether the first row or column contains any zeros initially. Why? Because we already seen here. You got the step now. Now we skip the first row and column and update the rest of the matrix based on the markings we find in step one. So why we skip this? Because we have to handle this case separately. It's like they're common to both row and column guys. That's why we don't want it to handle that in the same thing. Because we might be ending up uh, making both to zero if even if one has to be made zero, one column or row has to be made zero. That's why uh, we handle this separately. Step four, this is very much same. Finally, we have to handle the first row and column separately, setting them to zero if required based on the facts. Not always you have to make both first row and column as zero, right? Uh, we saw here, solid example. In this case, uh, sorry, this is one, this is one. In this case, we just need to make this row as zero. Here, the first row becomes zero, not the first column. So that's why we always uh, handle separately. So as I said, we always go with the optimistic approach. Uh, so is that that like first row is uh, like zero, we make it false because like we don't, uh, we consider we don't need to do that change. That's the programmer. Program is always optimistic, you know. So after this, uh, we go to the matrices to mark zeros in the first row and first column. So basically here, I'm stressing this point again. We're not using extra space. Uh, we're using the first row and first column to be our guides or references to mark this entire row and column to be zero, guys. That's what. So here, uh, we're just going to the rows and the columns and then we, we just check if the cell is zero and then uh, if the zero is in the first row. So basically, we need to know these guys are for a reason, right? We need to uh, actually set them if they are zero. If row is close to zero, row count is zero, that means the first row is zero, buddy. So we have to make it true. And then if the zero is in the first column, mark it. So first column is equal to zero, we just mark the first column as zero to true, true. So we're done with handling first row and column. Now this is for rest of the things. So how do we mark it? We know we have to mark the first row or first column to be zero if that particular row or column has to be zero. So for this process, let's take a cell. So this is cell of i comma j. I'm just representing some particular cell I'm taking. This is like cell is uh, some matrix here, uh, matrix named cell here in that I'm taking some particular ij. Okay. So if this cell is equal to zero, 
so here let's say this is i comma j is what we have so for this we have to make this row like this has to be zero and this has to be zero so for the i row we have to make this first column as zero guys so that's all we we do we take this this case here is the i comma i comma zero and how do we represent this one this is basically zero comma j uh, zero and j right so that's all we're doing here so basically what we are doing so if this is zero and then we're marking this is equals to and cell of zero comma j is equals to zero so we just marking this as zero to keep hold of a reference to mark entire column into as zero you got this right and then we just iterate to the matrix excluding the first row and column and update the cells to zero if the row or column is marked as zero before like basically if the first row or column is marked as zero we need to update it we know why we are handling this case separately because this is common to both so we checking if this first row is zero and first column is zero and then we setting this cell to zero matrix third row comma column is equal to zero okay and then uh, this is a case where if the first row was marked so set the entire first row to zero so basically we have this first row mark like first row is zero we make this uh, true in that case we have to set this first row uh, to be like zero right so for that the, we, we access the first row using the zero and then uh, the column is keeps variable here so column like it can be first column or second column right this is the row the column could change so this could be first column like zero to three right so that's what like we keep this row fixed and then we take over the column to make this uh, row entire row as zero and then same is for the column if first column as zero we keep the column fixed and we iterate over the row that's all so the row keeps changing and then we uh, make it like uh, this is a variable row this is the uh, zeroth column so because row can be we have one two three any of this row this column should be zero that's why we iterate over this and then we make it zero so what is the space complexity here we don't use any extra uh, like array or as such this is just two variables we use that's row of one only we, and then we use only the first row and first column only to have a reference to mark others to zero. So it's just O of one only here. Like we haven't used any extra space, guys. Congratulations, you learned it. The time complexity, guys, you would have guessed it. It's O of m into n. Basically, uh, m, uh, this is of length m, this is of length n. This is m into n. Here also it is same thing, m into n. Here, uh, so totally, if we do the steps, O of m n plus another uh, what we're doing this so another set of o of mn plus uh, this one set of m uh, we're trading the column set that is going to be n n and then we're trading till uh, rows length that is going to be m this is going to be a 2m into n plus this is going to be a o of n plus o of m so out of this like constant would go off and this also should go off because like this is more greater so whichever is greater we consider that so this is O of M and time complexity. So I have the code ready. Let's try running this. So yeah, it is accepted. We don't have any issues. Let's try submitting this. So yeah, this also accepts solution. It beats almost like 50% of users. So yeah, we're cool. So guys, you learned how to solve this problem in four different ways. Like your interview will be pretty much impressed. And definitely would be qualified to next round, guys. So, buddies, that's a wrap on solving the set matters of zero problem with four different approaches. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, spread the word to your fellow coders, and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. See you in the next one.